With the Prime Minister away at the G20 in Bali, it was the turn of the deputies to handle Prime Minister's questions in Parliament. That meant Dominic Raab had to face Angela Rayner, a difficult proposition in a week where Raab has faced a growing number of allegations of bullying and misconduct. Now, after days of dodging and denial, this morning the Deputy Prime Minister finally acknowledged formal complaints about his misconduct. But his letter contains no hint of admission or apology. This is anti-bullying. This this is anti-bullying week. Will he apologise? What Rain is referring to there is a letter that Raab wrote to the Prime Minister just hours before their clash. He posted it on social media saying this. I have written to the Prime Minister to request an independent investigation into two formal complaints that have been made against me. I look forward to addressing these complaints and continuing to serve as Deputy Prime Minister, Justice Secretary and Lord Chancellor. Now, this is the first time that formal complaints have been mentioned. And since then, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has said he will personally pick an investigator to look into them. I'm not sure if that's supposed to inspire confidence. Now, one of those complaints is about Raab's time as Foreign Secretary, and the other is about his last stretch as Justice Secretary. She asked about uh, the complaints. I received notification this morning. I immediately asked the Prime Minister to set up an independent uh, inquiry into them. I'm confident I behave professionally throughout, but of course I will engage thoroughly and look forward, Mr Speaker, may I say, look forward to transparently addressing any claims that are being made. So, Mr Speaker, let me get this straight. He has had to demand an investigation into himself because the Prime Minister is too weak to get a grip. A Prime Minister in office less than a month with a disgraced Cabinet Minister resigned with his good wishes, the Home Secretary who breached the Ministerial Code and risked national security still clings on, and now the Prime Minister defends his deputy whose behaviour has been described as abrasive, controlling and demeaning. With junior staff, Mr Speaker, too scared to even enter his office. And that's without mentioning the flying tomatoes. The Deputy Prime Minister knows his behaviour is unacceptable. So what's he still doing here? Deputy Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I'm here and happy to address any specific point she wishes to make. Uh, Well, that never happened, uh, she says, from a sedentary position, and I uh, will thoroughly rebut and refute any of the claims that have been made. She hasn't, in fact, she hasn't, in fact, put a specific point to me. If she wishes to do so, and this is her opportunity, I'd be very glad to address it. Now, it was a little bit risky to invite Rayner to raise specific points, and that's exactly what she did. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Maybe he just doesn't think there's a problem or maybe he's suggesting that civil servants are liars. Now he's reportedly banned from meeting junior staff without supervision. While we await an inquiry the Prime Minister hasn't even instigated from a watchdog he hasn't even appointed. In the Prime Minister's letter he did not say how and when this will be investigated or by who. No ethics. No integrity and no mandate, and still no ethics advisor. So when will they appoint an independent ethics advisor and drain the swamp? <laughs> Just think she went for drain the swamp um, the day after Trump announced his candidacy. Not that I'm saying she's aping him. It's an, it's an interesting phrase. Anyway, there were two specific points there. That's what Dominic Raab was asking for. Have you been banned from meeting civil servants alone? And when will you appoint an ethics advisor? Now, I don't need to tell you that Rob couldn't give a straight answer to Eva. I feel like if I was a civil servant, I wouldn't want to be left alone in a room with that vein on his head without supervision. It looks like it's about to like burst out of his head. It's like I actually can't focus on anything else when I'm watching him. I always find it kind of a bit sort of surreal when we talk about these conserv- particularly conservative politicians who reap like wreak untold havoc on the lives of everyday people in such a callous way that it turns out that that, that, that they're all so interpersonally awful. Um, you know, I mean, this is Dominic Raab is a man who is against the Human Rights Act, who peddles the MRA myths of 
you know, reverse sexism, who blames feminists for basically everything bad ever that happens to a man. Um, he wanted to scrap minimum wage laws for people under the age of 21. It, it doesn't surprise me that someone who has that, who uses his political power to those ends, also happens to be a nasty piece of work uh, on a on a personal level. And I, and I think, you know, Raina does do really well at the dispatch box. I think that she had a really good performance there. Um, I would like to see similar passion and vim when it comes to bullying and harassment in her own party, um, which takes place a lot of the time against people that at one point I'm sure she considered to be uh, political allies. I'm thinking in particular, obviously, of Apsana Begum, who was left, I would argue, deliberately exposed to um, her ex-husband, um, who was allegedly abusive. And, you know, it, it, as far as she was concerned, his his abuse was weaponized against her by the Labour Party. Um, I think, you know, things like uh, blocking um, you know, long-time labor activists and local community members and local community activists from running, weaponizing bureaucracy in this way. Um, I'm sure that that all suggests a pretty rotten and intolerant and aggressive party culture. And so, you know, I think really that was political performance, which is fine. I mean, that's what that's what PMQs are, are for. But I, I don't think that I'm necessarily reassured that things would be wildly different under a a labor government i don't think that there would be a fundamental change in the in the culture of politics because all of the evidence of starmer's labor um suggests that you know dissent and other kind any kind of conflict within the party is dealt with in very aggressive and sharp elbowed uh ways so a good political performance by angela rayner i just wish it was indicative of deeper political conviction. Um, but I guess, you know, that's not what PMQs are for. <laughs> I always say, I hope Labour win the next general election. I'm sick of this Tory government, but I hold no illusions that we then won't still have a cabinet full of assholes. You know, that's, that's, that comes with the territory. Well, that doesn't excuse it, but I just think, you know, everyone getting all high and right, just like, I can't believe you behaved in this unpleasant way. Like, have you seen who you're sitting next to? Uh -huh.